Monday of the 28th week in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Sing praise to God who reigns above, the God of all creation, the God of power, the God of love, the God of our salvation. With healing balm my soul he fills, and every faithless murmur stills. To God all praise and glory. What God's almighty power hath made, his gracious mercy keepeth. By morning glow or evening shade, his watchful eye never sleepeth. Within the kingdom of his might, lo, all is just and all is right. To God all praise and glory. Then all my gladsome way along I sing aloud thy praises, that men may hear the grateful song my voice unwearied raises. Be joyful in the Lord, my heart, both soul and body, bear your part. To God all praise and glory. O ye who name Christ's holy name, give God all praise and glory. All ye who own this power, proclaim aloud the wondrous story. Cast each false idol from his throne. The Lord is God and he alone. To God all praise and glory. How good is the God of Israel to the pure of heart. How good God is to Israel, to those who are pure of heart. Yet my feet came close to stumbling, my steps had almost slipped, for I was filled with envy of the proud when I saw how the wicked prosper. From them there are no pains, their bodies are sound and sleek, they have no share in men's sorrows, they are not stricken like others. So they wear their pride like a necklace, they clothe themselves with violence, their hearts overflow with malice, their minds seethe with plots. They scoff, they speak with malice. From on high they plan oppression. They have set their mouths in the heavens, and their tongues dictate to the earth. So the people turn to follow them and drink in all their words. They say, How can God know? Does the Most High take any notice? Look at them, such are the wicked, but untroubled they grow in wealth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How good is the God of Israel to the pure of heart. Their laughter will turn to weeping, their merriment to grief. How useless to keep my heart pure and wash my hands in innocence when I was stricken all day long, suffered punishment day after day. Then I said, if I should speak like that, I should abandon the faith of your people. I strove to fathom this problem, too hard for my mind to understand, until I pierced the mysteries of God and understood what becomes of the wicked. How slippery the paths on which you set them! You make them slide to destruction. How suddenly they come to their ruin, wiped out, destroyed by terrors! Like a dream one wakes from, O Lord. When you wake, you dismiss them as phantoms. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Their laughter will turn to weeping, their merriment to grief. Those who depart from you will perish. My joy is to remain with you, my God. And so, when my heart grew embittered, and when I was cut to the quick, I was stupid and did not understand, no better than a beast in your sight. Yet I was always in your presence. You were holding me by my right hand. You will guide me by your counsel, and so you will lead me to glory. What else have I in heaven but you? Apart from you I want nothing on earth. My body and my heart faint for joy. God is my possession forever. All those who abandon you shall perish. You will destroy all those who are faithless. To be near God is my happiness. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will tell of all your works at the gates of the city of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It is good to be with you, Father. In you, in you is fullness of life for your faithful people. In you all hope resides. May you lead us to everlasting happiness. Those who depart from you will perish. My joy is to remain with you, my God. To savor your words is my delight, O Lord. Honey itself is not sweeter. A reading from the book of the prophet Haggai. On the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, in the second year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Ask the priests for a decision. 
If a man carries sanctified flesh in the fold of his garment, and the fold touches bread, or pottage, or wine, or oil, or any other food, do they become sanctified? No, the priests answered. Then Haggai said, If a person unclean from contact with the corpse touches any of these, do they become unclean? The priests answered, They become unclean. Then Haggai continued, So is this people, and so is this nation in my sight, says the Lord, and so are all the works of their hands, and what they offer there is unclean. But now consider from this day forward, before there was a stone laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord, how did you fare? When one went up to a heap of grain for twenty measures, it would yield but ten. When another went to the vat to draw fifty measures, there would be but twenty. I struck you in all the works of your hands with blight, searing wind and hail, yet you did not return to me, says the Lord. Consider from this day forward, from the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, from the day on which the temple of the Lord was founded, consider. Indeed, the seed has not sprouted, nor have the vine, the fig, the pomegranate, and the olive tree yet born. From this day I will bless. The message of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the twenty-fourth day of the month. Tell this to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah. I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the thrones of kingdoms, destroy the power of the kingdoms of the nations. I will overthrow the chariots and their riders, and the riders with their horses shall go down by one another's sword. On that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, in my servant, says the Lord, and I will set you as a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the treasures of all the nations will come in. The glory of this house will be great. I will give peace in this place, and the treasures of all the nations will come in. From a treatise against Fabianus by St. Fulgentius of Rispe, Bishop. In our offering of the Holy Sacrifice, we fulfill the command of our Savior, as recorded by the Apostle Paul. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you shall proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. This sacrifice is offered then to proclaim the Lord's death. It is offered in remembrance of him who laid down his life for our sake. As he says, greater love than this no one has, that one lay down his life for his friends. Because Christ died for us out of love, we ask when we make remembrance of his death at the time of the sacrifice, that we too may be granted love through the coming of the Holy Spirit. We pray that by the love which Christ had for us when he braved the cross, we may receive the grace of the Spirit and be crucified to the world and the world to us. The death Christ died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Let us imitate our Lord's death and also live a new life. Strengthened with the gift of his love, let us die to sin and live for God. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Indeed, our sharing in the Lord's body and blood when we eat his bread and drink his cup teaches us that we should die to the world and that we should keep our life hidden with Christ in God, crucifying our flesh with its vices and evil desires. That is why all the faithful who love God and their neighbor truly drink the cup of the Lord's love, even though they may not drink the cup of his bodily suffering. And becoming inebriated from it, they put to death whatever in their nature is rooted in earth. They clothe themselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not indulge fleshly desires. They do not fix their gaze on visible things, but contemplate things which the eye cannot see. Thus, they drink the Lord's cup by preserving the holy bond of love, Without it, even if a man should deliver his body to be burned, he gains nothing. But the gift of love enables us to become in reality what we celebrate as a mystery in the sacrifice. 
Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke the bread. Then he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is given up for you. Do this in memory of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. This is my body which is given up for you. Do this in memory of me. Let us pray. Lord, our help and guide, make your love the foundation of our lives. May our love for you express itself in our eagerness to do good for others. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. Thanks.